Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome to this latest Chassis Sim video tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to be discussing is something I've wanted to talk about for a while, but when it immediately happened, I sort of had to keep a little bit quiet on the specifics of it. However, in the fullness of time, I can now talk about it in greater depth. And what I'm going to be talking to you about is when Chassis Sim played a very integral part of um, winning the 2014 Bathurst 12 Hour. And so what I'm going to talk to you about today, ladies and gentlemen, is some practical approach to, uh, approaches to vehicle dynamics that um, uh, uh, some practical approaches to vehicle dynamics that get results. So. That particular, this was the Ferrari 458 that was run by Maranello Motorsport. Also, the car was engineered using chassis sim. Now, the really thing of why this is why this victory is very, very dear to my heart is the fact that this victory I was very much a passenger of. This was uh, this car was race engineered um, by my Australian de dealer Pat Cahill from Competition Systems, and pretty much I was sort of informed after the fact of everything that he did. So, really, if you want a good case study of um, why chassis sim is in the reach of, uh, of normal race engineers as opposed to simulation specialists. This really, really screams out as a good case in point. But one point that I really want to make, though, ladies and gentlemen, about this victory is that chassis sim was used as a calculator. It wasn't used as a magic wand. And all too often, the trap that I see people falling into using race car simulation is they fall into two traps. Number one, they get all blinded by the pretty. Gra they get blinded by pretty gr uh, graphics, and they think the game engines are perfectly uh, fit for purpose. And we'll talk about that in another tutorial. But the other thing that uh, the other trap that they fall into is that they tend to use simulation as a uh, as a magic wand as opposed to a calculator. If you use simulation as a magic wand you will always be doomed to disappointment. However, if you use it as a calculator, it's an incredibly powerful tool. The other, uh, the other pillar of this victory was you start simple and you get complicated later. You don't do it the other way around. So let's now delve in to the specific steps um, of how chassis sim was used um, to um, engineer this race car. The first things, uh, the first thing for, uh, the first things first was that uh, was that chassis sim, uh, it was that the dampers were specified using this uh, the chassis sim shaker rig um, uh, toolbox. And if anything, um, when I um, teach, um, uh, uh, when I go off and teach how to use the chassis sim shaker rig toolbox um, in our um, uh, in our boot camps. Pretty much, it's uh, pretty much. It draws upon the methodolo uh, 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 It draws upon the methodology that Pat used um, in this um, uh, in this victory. And the key to this was that um, when you you basically use the shaker rig toolbox to go through and try a bunch of different um, damper set, uh, d different damper settings. Now, what you're looking for is that you throw in a whole bunch of changes with the car, and particularly for something like a GT3 car. And below, you're first looking to minimize your contact patch load variation, and then what you do is you work on tuning this shape to um, uh, to tie in to what you've recorded in terms of the feedback of um, uh, the uh, the feedback of the driver. If you do that, it's a, actually it's a very very powerful tool. Now, how you use the Shaker Rig Toolbox, you know, for something like a touring car or a GT3 car, will be a very very different proposition. To what you would do for something where downforce is more dominant, we'll talk. But we'll, uh, but we might revisit that in another tutorial. But that was the first bedrock in terms of um, the, in terms of uh, this victory. And so, really, where the damper spec came from was using the Shaker Root toolbox. The next was using the lap time simulation. Now, what made the event at 2014 of the Bathurst 12 Hour 2014 really, really interesting is the track at this point had just been resurfaced. So consequently, it threw quite a few jokers into the pack. Now, the thing about it uh, uh, now, the thing about uh, uh, the thing about white threw a few jokers in the pack was that first things first, um, uh, because the circuit had been resurfaced. Um, any circuit models that you were bringing to it needed a bit of twinking. This, ladies and gentlemen, is where the bump profiling toolbox well and truly made its presence felt because it gives you that ability to look at the bumps on the circuit and be able to put it back into um, uh, uh, and be able to put it back into your circuit model. However, 
What was really interesting was with a number of the setup changes, the drivers were complaining, oh, you know, the car's really, really sensitive. Now, in a situation like this, it becomes very, very tempting to chase your own tail. But when this was run through um, the chassis and lap time simulation, because it was used to sanity check the um, setup changes, that, uh, uh, that same sensitivity was observed. So that sort of, uh, that sort of gave um, uh, the team the confidence to go, okay, let's focus on a few basic setup changes so we don't go chasing our own tail. That was the one area where the lap time simulation really proved to be it's worth, worth its weight in gold. And indeed, one of the things that I always do when I'm doing some sanity checking is uh, the, t the, two, the two simulation tools that I often use, I will start using... Uh, uh, using the shaker rig toolbox to get myself into uh, uh, into the ballpark in terms of dampers and then what I'll do is I will then use the lap time simulation to go through and sanity check what I need to do so to dial in where I need to be in terms of um, in terms of mechanical balance in terms of what's this spring gonna do etc etc and I have found that both of these tools work really, really well. And and I'll give Paddy's due. He was a real pioneer um, in this because really I was probably a bit late to the party in terms of um, using the Shaker Rig toolbox um, effectively. That was really, I sort of started to use that really post-2016 after um, uh, uh, after my adventures in um, uh, World Time Attack where they all sort of dovetailed into each other. The second, uh, uh, the third uh, bedrock of um, uh, this, uh, the third bedrock of um, d of doing this, was using the track replay um, uh, to um, predict tire pressures. Now, this is actually something that we've thrown into the lap time simulation. Chassis Sim in its tire model has the ability to be able to model core internal tire temperature. So if you can model core internal tire temperatures, it means you can predict tire pressures. And really what this was used for was um, Pat would say, okay, well, if we have this set up, what's the tire pressure growth going to be? You know, do we need to, st uh, uh, you know, do we need to start say on a higher pressure or can we go a little bit softer and start on a lower pressure and let it um, come to us? And what I'm gonna say here is that the correlation that we've achieved with this um, look, it hasn't been perfect. That being said, it's been well uh, it's been well into the window where you can actually use this. Say if you're doing say a run from cold and you're doing say a 10 to 15 lap stint, you know, to sanity check, hey look, are the tires going to be on fire or not? And particularly if we take a look at the conditions that were running at Bathurst in February, I mean, you were talking ambient of 40 degrees Celsius, you were talking a track temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. So that ability to go in and um, uh, predict those hot tire pressures was a really, really, really uh, uh, was a really, really useful feature. The other th note that I'll also add to this is that the bedrock of the model that was used for this was uh, one of our default GT3 templates, and what uh, uh, and so um, uh, uh, so what uh, uh, so what was done with this model is that base model was taken, which was a very good baseline. Some, some correlation was done to make sure that it was in the ballpark. And once it was in the ballpark, then you could go through and use tools like the Shaker Rig Toolbox to see where you were on damping, the lap time simulation to see, okay, what are these changes going to do? Or more importantly, um, as we can see in the uh, uh, as we can see in the variation of the throttle and the uh, and the steering trace, does that correlate? Uh, does that correlate to um, um, uh, what the drivers were doing? Because the the very unique thing about this event, this is one of these very very blessed events where the the uh, where you ha uh, where you had two extremely good drivers um, who were uh, um, who were driving this, so you knew they weren't going to give you feedback that would want, that would make you chase uh, uh, chase your own tail. Then of course, lastly was using the track replay simulation to see where you were in terms of tire pressures. So, and ultimately though, ladies and gentlemen, the payoff of all this is stuff like, is when you get, when you've done your job properly, you're going to have stuff like this, which is um, actual as colored, simulated as black. Steer, throttle, front dampers, rear dampers, uh, 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 steered angle, lateral G, longitudinal G, front roll and uh, and rear roll ladies and gentlemen that is your bedrock in terms of uh, and that gives you the ability to be able to make sure that when you make changes here 
when you make changes here and when you make changes here you know you're not guessing and that is something that I'm re uh, and then that's something that I must have uh, uh, that I must have uh, that I must hammer home and I'm actually going to cover this in a later tu tutorial because this is the thing that separates out the serious vehicle uh, that that se uh, separates ser uh, uh, a serious industrial vehicle model such as the chassis vehicle models as a per, uh, um uh, as a poor, uh, as opposed to more ba uh, uh, as opposed to more basic as opposed to more basic tools because this gives you the ability to blast into areas that you sim uh, and gives you the confidence to blast into those areas that you simply wouldn't have the confidence um, uh, with, other to uh, with other tools to do. So, some conclusions and parting thoughts. One thing I want to stress, vehicle dynamics does not need to be overcomplicated. Probably the biggest suck you in I ever see with people using simulation is they get so locked up in trying to get something down to the nearest 0 0.001 of a mil ride height correlation that um, uh, they literally cannot see the forest through the trees. Also too, I cannot stress enough, as was done with this model, you start simple and you get complicated later, very, very key. Also too, first things first, the shaker rig toolbox was used to calculate the dampers, the lap time simulation was used to sanity check the setup pressures, and the track replay was used to look at the tire pressure graphs. And I cannot stress enough, ladies and gentlemen, the last parting thought I want to deal, uh, I want to leave you with. You use chassis sim as a calculator. Do not use it as a magic wand. If you use it as a calculator, what will happen is it will inform your instinct on the pit wall so you can make the appropriate calls. But if you ever try and just use it as a magic wand, you will be forever doomed to disappointment. Let's leave it at that, and we will catch you in the next Chassim video tutorial.